I'm a 41-year-old single white female who was a bad girl in her 20s. I had an absent father, but was raised by a loving Christian mom. I've struggled to see how I've even ended up this way because it went against my core self. Can you help me identify the familial and societal reasons I ended up in this dead end within my personal life, and in the process, maybe help some younger women avoid the same trap? That's from Anne. Well, hi, Anne. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you, Stefan? I am ambivalent. But I am focused <laughs> okay. on you, the caller. Thank you. Thank you. Um, is there more that you wanted to add? I mean, it sounds like uh, yeah, that was uh, quite the miniseries back there. <laughs> that was a really, really shortened summary. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know kind of what, what went wrong in my life uh, and, and how I ended up where I did. Um, um, I was also an only child. Um, I didn't want kids ever. Um, I was a, I, I was always a very intellectual child. I was gifted. I was top of the class. Um, I, I had everything going for me, basically, except that I didn't have my father in my life. Um, my mom and him were married, um, and they were married when she had me. Um, they were married for nine years, but they divorced when I was three, so I don't have any actual memories of him. Um, he did visit me once when I was 14, but um, that really didn't mean much to me. What the hell happened? Um, he, my, my mom's a really caring person, and... Um, <clears throat> oh, gosh. Well, well, Please, let's not start with the propaganda quite yet, okay? <laughs> just, just give me the facts. Don't, okay. don't give me the, the sunshine up the butt stuff yet, in, okay? <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, like the moment I say what happened, you're like, oh, my mom's great. It's like, no, well, no, come on. Let, let's just start with the facts. She, if she was okay. great, why did you grow up without a dad? So let's just go with the facts, all well, right? Well, she, she was, you know, in her 20s, and she, she met my dad, who was... I believe already in another relationship with somebody and but of course he promised her the world and he wanted to marry my mom basically my dad and this is of course only going from what my mom has told me because I have no other source um, is that he was kind of a moocher he would uh, latch on to a woman that would take care of him do including I'm not just saying housework and everything I'm saying uh, you know make money outside the home, raise the kid, do this, do that. He would find women uh, like that. And he was married like, I think, three times, including my mom. And he has three other kids to other mothers. So so what you're telling me, this is all shorthand for he's very good looking. Um, You know... I guess he would have been considered good looking back then. Um, I have a picture of him. Yeah, he was good looking. The only thing, the only fault he had was he was short. He was about five six. <laughs> but um, you know, I, I guess. <laughs> um, but well, what was what was what, like what, what what makes up for the fact that he's um, uh, a little loose with his pe <laughs> penis kind of like a boomerang, right? Except it doesn't um, come back that often. So what, what makes, <laughs> like, why? Why would he get so many w women with him? Well, that is probably part of it, but, um, and also talking from extended family on his side, I, I think he he was a very manipulative personality type. He was what I would consider. Okay, so that's a negative. Sorry to be yeah. interrupt, but I'm looking for a positive here. Uh, uh, well, I mean, it was positive for him is that he could knew how to reel them in. But, no, but there has to be some reason why people fall for the manipulation, right? That there has yeah. to be some, like the, the, the manipulation, you could say, is the hook, but there's, a, there's something on the hook that makes the fish bite the hook, right? Um, I think in my mom's case, she, she um, was raised by some very, um, very I, don't, I don't know, authoritarian parents is probably the best term to use and as she was getting older she wanted to get away from that and she met him and, and it was sort of like uh, the answer to my problems and I can get away from my parents who are breathing down my neck and being strict and you know but there's tons of guys ton like, was your mom like did she have a hump no. did she have like a third nasal passage my that came is, out of her cheek no my mom's very attractive okay so your mom's very attractive so basically 
since your mom was very attractive, she had her choice. So why is she choosing Wonder Dwarf? <laughs> I, I wish I knew the answer to that question. Um, I, I don't know. I, I think she was naive in her early 20s. I mean, that is my... Oh, man. You are... Oh, female in-group preference plus parental propaganda. I, okay. I don't have, I, I'm, I don't, I'm suiting up here, that, and you're getting, you know, getting all ready to roll. But I just don't have the whole story. You know, I, you don't have any of the story. But I was... Why <laughs> are you here? It had something to do with the fact that your mother was really attracted to your father, and she decided to get married to him even though she stole him heartlessly out of another relation, another woman's arms. Okay. You said he was in another relationship yeah. when he met your yeah. mom. So he cheated on his ex yes. to be with your mom, and shockingly, he turned out to be unreliable. That's yeah. as predictable as sunrise, right? Uh, yeah. I, I mean, believe me, um, my mom admits that it was a mistake. I just don't even know if she knew no, I, um, yeah, I'd have to yes, put her on the phone. Of course, it's a mistake. Not that you are. Glad to be talking to you. <laughs> Otherwise, it would sound kind of weird. But, um, but the question is, how did the mistake come about, right? I mean, yeah. as parents, right? I mean, you're a parent, right? And as parents, we don't want our children to repeat our mistakes. And the way that we do that is figure out what the hell happened. Yeah. And you don't have a clue, which means that your mother has – either your mother doesn't have a clue or she has a clue but hasn't told you. Well – it, it's possible, yeah. Because you, you don't want to end up being taken in. I guess maybe you were. We'll get to that in a sec. Yeah. But the question is, how did your mother end up with a truly, and I, I hate to put it this bluntly, but a truly shitty father for her children? I mean, that's terrible. Uh, I know. Hung yeah. around for a couple of years and then didn't even orbit. Like, he went deep space, right? He went interstellar. He was gone, baby gone. That is a shitty father for your children. Yeah. So the question is, how did your mother end up with such a shitty father for her children? Um, only she could answer that. I, I, you know. No, you've known her for years. I, you I you must have some clue. I, I, I mean, I really truly think it, it was part, I mean, I know you're going to say I'm apologizing for her, but I feel she was naive. She was taken in by his charismatic personality, his looks, I'm, I'm sure that had part to do with it, and her desire to get away from my grandparents and be on her own away from their authoritarianness. Um, and she couldn't achieve any independence without clinging on to a, uh, what, a very charming garden gnome? <laughs> I I don't I don't know what her other options were back then. Moving out, getting a job. There's lots of well, options for women. You know, it's this year. You know, I mean, no, you're not that old. No, she worked. She she worked. Um, she was working. Okay, so she didn't need a guy. No, she didn't event. need one. She must have had an emotional void. And okay, this gives me sort of an idea. Um, because I would say her dad. My grandfather, he was a very stoic personality. He was not warm and fuzzy. Um, he might not have given her that um, male um, uh, role model or companionship she desired. And, and maybe she, it was, she was just desperate for that. He, that's just the way he was. Um, okay, but let's say that, that this sounds like a real shot in the dark because it just know. sounds like a guy to me. But <laughs> even if this was the case, Anne, and the reason – because we need to figure this stuff out to some degree if we're going to get to you and your youth, right? Yeah. I mean, in my opinion. Yeah. But even if we accept all that that's true, that she had a desperate longing for male companionship, well, hello, that's why there are people in the world. We all have a desperate longing for romantic love, uh, uh, hopefully with people whose uh, parts fit together like two complementary pieces of a jigsaw puzzle, making a new jigsaw puzzle. But the, the, the fact that she had a strong urge to be with a man, all right, mm -hmm. fine. But the question is, why that man? Were there no men around who were not already in a relationship? I, I, I know. I, I get what you're saying, and I, I don't know the answer to that because I only really ever asked her, like, you know, what my dad was like. I never asked her, well, why didn't you pick somebody else or wasn't there other? My question is, why hasn't she told you? I don't know. Why didn't she tell you? You know, look, obviously nobody wants, no, no parent wants to look at the kid and say, well, I chose a really bad dad for you and I'm really sorry about that and here's what happened. But. Well, she admits that. I mean, she said, you know, she admits that. Yeah, but that doesn't help you know what triggered it or what the cause right. was or what the susceptibility was. Right. No, I, I don't know her psych, psych, psycholo psychology about this. I don't. 
Well, I, uh, you know, I'll just hold on. You give her a call, and uh, we'll just wait here. Okay. You, so wait, we'll patch her in. Do I, we have her number? I'm um, just kidding. I, so, do you, well, I would do it. But, I mean, I mean, if you, be, if you want me to pause and go talk to her and come back, I will ask her a specific question. Is she there now? Um, yeah, I actually live with her, but I don't. Ah. I don't want her in on the conversation because this is the rest of it is too personal for me. Okay, all right. Uh, well, um, I tell you what, let's let's uh, get you back uh, after you've had the conversation, but let's continue on with what we're talking about now. Okay. Um, but this is important. I mean, okay. this is important because, um, and I just say this to parents as a whole: you need to teach your kids what you did wrong. So they don't repeat the mistakes because right. you are now um, a mess. <laughs> right. And are you a mess because you chose the wrong guys? Uh, I do admit that I chose some wrong guys. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll, probably, I'll give you some background of how, of how, how my relationship, pro, uh, you know, history progressed. Basically, um, the first um, guy I was with, the guy I lost my virginity to when I was 15, he ended up stalking. After I broke up with him six months later, he ended up stalking me for a couple of years. This threw me into a massive amount of anxiety, depression, and turmoil. No, hang on. Just, just stalking runs the gamut from he's showing up a lot at the bar to like uh, he's in my closet at 4 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Okay. So what are we talking what, here? What he did was, well, he just, he lived three doors down from us. So, and he would sit on his porch and he could see our house from his house. And so anytime, and I walked everywhere at that age. And so he would wait till I left the house. He would follow me around the neighborhood. He was in school with me. And if he had a class with me or saw me in the hallway, he would call me slut and this and that and ruin my self-esteem in front of other people, humiliate me. Um, my mom was at work, uh, so I would come home to an empty house, and he would call the house over and over and over again. It was psychological warfare, basically. Um, he did threaten to kill me one time, um, although I only found out secondhand because a friend told me and said he t he was like, I, I talked him out of walking up to your house and, and shooting you with his dad's gun. So... <laughs> um, Okay, let's let's not laugh about this. Okay? No, I know. I'm. I know it's not funny. Um, it's not. Believe me, it was um terrible. But um. And what were there? Were there any signs of this lunatic behavior when you were dating him before you slept with him? Um. No, I just knew that he. I wasn't. He, the, the strange thing is, I wasn't even physically attracted tra attracted to him, but I went out with him because he kept, um, even though he he he, he was not attractive, um, and he was giving me a lot of attention and and being nice to me, and the kids in the neighborhood were, were like, "Give him a chance, give him a chance," and I I was I reluctantly got into the into the relationship with him. And the whole sex thing, I didn't even want to have sex with him. I did it for this bizarre reason because I felt extremely adult in my mind at age 15. And I felt like that if I didn't have sex, I was never, I was not a true adult. And I wanted to get, I wanted to put childhood behind me and be an adult. And so it was just, that was really the only reason. <laughs> um, right. Okay. I, I don't and and you understand that growing up without a father, that is the natural pattern, right? You you generally epigenetically tend towards being our selected, uh, early promiscuity, lack of boundaries, and a desire to latch onto a man or, or a boy, I guess in this case. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is the effect well, of growing up without a father in general. I've read about that, but I don't understand the reasons why. And that's what I'm hoping to get to in this conversation and hopefully help other girls without fathers because I don't want that this to happen to another woman. Right. I just well, don't, I just don't the, the understand why... the psychological reasons. I don't get it. Well, it's not just psychological. It's, it's, um, it's epigenetic, which means it's biological. Oh. Like in general, girls who grow up without fathers, they get their periods a year earlier okay. than girls who grow up with fathers. 
When you grow up without a father, your body starts programming you for a dangerous, violent, gynocentric world. Because your body says, no dad around. That must mean there's war. Or there's no investment in children from the fathers. Mm -hmm. Right? And so what that means is, let's say that, and, and for white people, it's generally war. So your body is like, okay, so there's war going on. There's famine. There's, there's disease. There's something that's taking out people randomly. Okay. So what I'm going to need to do in order to reproduce in a dangerous or unstable or uncertain environment, you try and have kids as soon as possible. Wow, I didn't know that. I, okay. Yeah, it's, it's quantity over quality. And when animals are in danger, uh, they generally tell, like prey species, like rabbits, they have tons of kids because they can't tell when the next hawk or fox or wolf is going to come along and just eat them up. So they strive to have um, sex as early as possible, as often as possible. They have as many kids as possible, and they almost they always invest almost nothing into those kids because it's just, yeah, you know, just like it's the tadpole or, or, or the oyster, you know, versus the polar bear or the wolf or the, 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 the predator species have far fewer children, and they have to teach them how to hunt. They have to teach them how they have to really invest. Right. And so if you grow up without a father, you grow up with the characteristics of a prey species, which is early compulsive sexuality, early menstruation, um, boy craziness. <laughs> yeah. And um, it is a, a wild uh, – I'll give you some, uh, some of the uh, facts, and you know, we'll put our sources. So fathers, <clears throat> we emit pheromones, which is – not just Latin for Indian food fueled farts, but these are airborne <laughs> chemical signals, right? And they, airborne chemical signals called pheromones, they trigger physiological and behavioral behavior, like behaviors, right? Right. Uh, male pheromones have different effects on young females. Exposure to the pheromones of biological fathers appears to slow down puberty in girls, while exposure to the pheromones of unrelated adult males speeds up puberty. You understand? Yes. If your dad's around, Puberty slows down, comes later. If men are around who aren't your father, your body is like, oh, okay, so we're not pair bonding, uh, either because the men don't care or there's a huge amount of danger. Men are in short supply, so we better have as many kids as possible because it's not a stable environment. If there's no dad around, it's not a stable environment, and your body responds. Um, now, you are appropriately. A recent Australian study found that having older brothers can also delay the onset of puberty in girls. The more older brothers a woman has, the older she is when she gets her first period. You, of course, were an only child. Right. Boys whose fathers are absent are more likely to reach puberty at a later age. That's the opposite of girls. Despite reaching puberty later, they are more likely to become fathers at an earlier age. So um, it's, it's biology and it's our genes struggling to, to understand the environment and to adjust a reproductive strategy appropriate to the level of stability in our environment. Does that make sense? Yeah, and um, I'm glad I'm talking to you because I didn't know this. I never heard of this. <laughs> no, of course. I mean, of course. I mean, there's lots of reasons why we don't know this stuff. Uh, so after accounting for a set of parental involvement variables, adolescents living with two biological parents were significantly less likely to transition into sexual activity when compared to adolescents from all other family structures. Adolescents from other family structures, right, other than two biological parents, were between 40% and 198% more likely to enter into sexual activity than adolescents living with two biological parents. Well, now, um, we'll get to this crazy uh, boy in a sec. Okay. For, um, for adolescent females, each year spent in a single parent household from birth to 11 years old increased the likelihood they would engage in sexual intercourse during adolescence by approximately 8%, right? So you were pretty, you said from three to 11 years old. So that's eight years times eight, 64%. So you were 64% more likely to engage in sexual uh, intercourse during adolescence because you didn't have a biological father's pheromones. Father absence is an environmental toxin. Hmm. That doesn't mean you're poisoned, right? I'm just right, saying right. that it has an effect on your biology. Um, we've got uh, a presentation we'll link to below, The Truth About Single Moms. And uh, Paul Rayburn, uh, I did an interview with him. He's got a book called Do Fathers Matter? What Science is Telling Us About the Parent We've Overlooked, right? Mm -hmm. You know that old phrase, a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle. Well, 
Uh, it's, you know, usual feminist claptrap and Marxist claptrap. Um, the reality is that you were biologically programmed for what happened. That doesn't mean that there's no choice, no free will. It's not an inevitability. Mm -hmm. But certainly the absence of this kind of knowledge, right. it's even more likely that this is going to go down, right? Right. And unfortunately... Because this is the... Excuse me. This is the, so this is the screwed up thing about single moms and single dads, too, if they do this, too. If you are raising a child without a father, what you need to do is look up the effects of raising a child without a father mm -hmm. so that you can teach your children about the risk factors involved in being raised without a father. And the risk factors are enormous. Yeah. Criminality, promiscuity, getting involved with unstable people like this 15-year-old stalky lunatic fellow. Mm -hmm. um, drug addiction, alcoholism, cigarette smoking, wide variety of dysfunctional ba behaviors, antisocial behavior, all of these associated with growing up without a dad. This information has been out for decades. Single moms are not doing the 10-minute Google search to say, huh, no parent, no, no daddy around. I wonder what effect that's going to have on the kids. I better find out. Oh, no. We're all just concerned about ALR and apples and BPA in bottles, but we don't ever look up what happens to children without fathers. Right. And I'm sorry that your mother didn't do that. I'm sorry that my mother didn't do that. But these seem to be the facts. Mm hmm well, I think she, you know, she probably thought that her uh, raising me Christian was probably going to counteract some of that. But where she went, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, don't bear No, I know. He does incense. He'll, he'll do. He'll give you some incense, maybe a couple of wafers, but he don't do pheromones. <laughs> so it does not interfere with, uh, or it does not delay menses. Right, and and also she, sex was always a, a taboo subject, and be, because of her religiousness, uh, it was hard to talk to her about that, and I never wanted, it made me feel very uncomfortable, so I felt like I was on my Wait, own her, there. I'm sorry, her religiousness? Yeah. Or, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little confused, because didn't she get divorced? Yeah, yeah, she did. Was that not against her religious vows, that she swore a solemn oath to love, honor, and obey in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, until death do they part? Well, in I, a church before the eyes of God? <laughs> well, you know, everyone... Oh, that's inconvenient take, religiosity. Takes it to, to what, people take it to whatever degree they want. Yeah, I know. Okay, so let's not blame it on religion, okay? Okay. Because people always say, this, well, there was this religiosity, you know, like this woman from Mexico talk about what a religious guy uh, this who knocked her up and didn't tell her the condom broke or whatever, right? So uh -huh. let's not blame religion okay. for this kind of behavior because it clearly was not a consistently applied ethic, to put it mildly. No, and, and I'm, I wouldn't. I'm not going to blame religion. I'm, I'm just trying to think how she might have thought. <laughs> you tried. I actually consider myself a Christian. <laughs> um, and, and I, you know, I think that's great. Mm -hmm. In which case, you should not blame God for your mother selectively applying, you know, her I, religious preferences. Right. No, I don't. And I think she should have divorced my dad. I don't, I, I, I don't think she should have stuck and with him. And why should she have divorced your dad? Because he was a jerk. <laughs> because I... Because no, no, that's, that's, that's why you don't have children with him. I'm not sure why okay. after you have children with him, you would divorce him for that. Um, you know, if you can put up with a jerk for five years, why not 50? If you want to have sex with a jerk for five years, why not 50? Like, what happened? Well... He was, he was, I mean, number one, he was just plain lazy. Now, I'm going off of her, um, this is what she's told me, so it's, I'm still secondhand knowledge, but, um, you know, he, he would be this uh, guy that would sleep till noon, he would be, quote, self-employed, as like a fuller brush man, or Amway, what? Well, I mean, he's a seeker. <laughs> he's a that? drummer. Anyway. Oh, on. okay. Yeah, he was like this. Um, uh, he had delusions of grandeur. Okay, and I actually can verify that because he would send me some letters that sounded like they were written by a crazy person. Like he would promise me the world. Um, like I'm going to buy you a Cadillac for your 16th birthday. But I knew that was impossible because he was living four miles away and delivering pizza, or four hours away and delivering pizza. Wait a minute. Hang on, hang on. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. I know. Hang on. I'm sorry. I, I, I forgot to put on my <laughs> crash helmet. Of... <laughs> okay. My dad lived in South Africa. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and I still saw him every year or two or three. Yeah. Your dad lived, I'm sorry, could you just remind me? Four hours. How many miles away? A four hour drive. About a four hour drive. Yeah. Four hour drive away. Sorry, I thought you said four miles. Okay, four four hour drive away. Yeah. And you saw him once. Correct. That, that, it, my mom did not. Now we know he had a car, unless he's delivering pizza on camel. <laughs> I believe he did, yeah. But um, he just didn't care. Yeah. Well, hang on, hang on. Uh, was he paying child support? No, he never paid a dime. Um, and my mom, uh, I think back then the laws were not quite as strict. And uh, she... Oh, no, they were. They've been pretty strict for a while. I uh, know that from my mom. I don't know. I was born in 75, but, um, but I, I'm older than you. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm not sure she may not have pursued it, probably thinking that, you know, she, it wouldn't be worth it. And, oh, I think, what are we going to live on pizza? Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but yeah, he did not pay child support. Um, did I, anyone not pick up her pizza dad? Can we eat today? <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I, but okay. So, so how long did she go out with him before they got married? Um, I think they were probably together for at least a year, six months to a year before they got married. Um, and so she may have reeled him out of another relationship and married him within six months. Yes, but How big was this guy's penis? Like, I, I, I are we talking like a rowboat? I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't, want, I don't know, and I don't want to know, but um, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I I'm. I'm trying to, I'm trying to find the hook here, but okay. The, he's lazy. He's short. He's in another relationship. Well, he, I don't know. Did he have other kids before you? Yes. Um, oh! Yes. Yeah. Hey, this. Um, you should be talking to my mom. Hang on. on this hang stuff. on. I'm not done. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah, he is. I'm not done, but I will continue. Okay, good. I'm doing this inside my head. It's like the Grand Canyon of uh, Banshee shredding in here. Sorry. No, you don't have to apologize. I'm glad you're here. I just don't understand how it happened. <laughs> he's lazy. He's underemployed. He's mm-hmm. a dreamer. He's That's... insane. He's tiny. <laughs> and he has other children, and he's in another relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Is he Satan? Does he cast voodoo spells? I don't know. Did he kidnap another sibling you don't know about in order? Like, what the, what the hell? I don't know, but he didn't seem to have a problem getting women being married three times. I don't get it. I, I, I don't get it. I'm sorry. I'm going to sound like a tea kettle for 20 minutes. And then we'll <laughs> God, does this not make you like, what the hell is wrong with women? I, I don't know. I mean, I know some, but... Did he have a full head of hair, at least? He did. He had very thick ah, hair. Ah, he had excellent hair. Go. Yeah. So happy I'm bald. <laughs> no, I'm, so it keeps the crazy women away. Oh, he's low status. Thanks, Jennifer Anderson. You go get married to someone else. <laughs> <laughs> and it's efficient. Look, I'm ready. Um, God almighty. Was he... I mean, was he... Muscly? No, not if he's lazy and sleeping till noon, right? No, I don't think he was. No, he wasn't like Mr. Did he have a mustache? I mean, it was the 70s. No, no he didn't. He was clean shaven. Wow. Wow. I mean, you couldn't have a more clear set of signals that this guy's a shitty dad, right? Uh, yeah. And he's just like, yeah, let's have some kids. Well, All I- these women lining up, lining up. I, I mean, I will say my mom did not have did not have me until she was six years into the marriage. So she she at least delayed it, but um, she did. Ta- oh, she no, no, you didn't. What? No, you didn't. You didn't just go there, did you? Well, I. <laughs> what are you just feeding me raw meat here for me? <laughs> I thought you were going to like me, Stefan. I'm sorry. I do like you. I am very happy to be having this conversation. I do like you, and I appreciate you having this conversation. I'm enjoying myself thoroughly okay. in a nihilistic end of the empire kind of way. All right. <laughs> okay. Because you're sort of, are you defending me? Uh, sorry, are you defending your mom by saying something along the lines of, well, she had six years to figure out he was a lazy, good for nothing guy, and then she had a kid? Well, 
I'm not defending her, but I mean, she Let's did. She, okay, Let's well, yes. I can't. Help, well, in some ways, I can't help it because she is my rock. She's been. She has been the only per, steady parental figure throughout my entire life. I love her. She's done everything she could possibly do for me. I mean, no, no, I'm not taking parental propaganda tonight. Okay. Okay. Because if she had if she had done everything she possibly could have done for you, would your life have been ended up in a mess? No, but I also have to take personal responsibility. I can't blame it all on okay. her. Okay. Then if you're going to take personal responsibility, how about giving mom some? Okay. All right. No, she's not perfect. I know that. Um. <sighs> so she knew that this guy was a terrible dad, was going to be a terrible dad. She actually told me she had planned on divorcing divorcing him right before she got pregnant with me. Oh, no. Did we have another, oops, felon dick situation? I don't think I was, well, I don't think I was planned, but I don't think I was unplanned. It was, yeah. No, no. Unplanned is planned. Okay. Like, like seriously, like if I'm going to sit there playing Russian roulette mm -hmm. with a revolver, spin, click, spin, click, spin, <laughs> Right. Well, it wasn't planned. It wasn't suicide. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> planned, but it wasn't. Yes, it was planned. Okay. Unprotected sex. We know is what. Is planning to have a kid. Yeah, we know what happens. Yeah. There are 17 different methods of birth control, not even counting non-vaginal forms of sexuality. So, yeah. So she planned on divorcing this guy and she wanted a kid. And she did tell me also that, um, you know, before she got married, she had thought that one day she, you know, she would marry and have four, four kids. Like, she wanted a bigger family. So, um, so yeah, that was... She wanted, wait, so, since, sorry to interrupt, but since mm -hmm. she was a kid, she wanted a bigger family? Yeah, she said she'd always wanted yeah, to because, you know, if you want a big family, the best guy to do it with is a guy who has no job and sleeps till noon, because... <laughs> He's just a fantastic provider. What was she going to do? Cut him up and sell him for parts? Was she going to feed him children, his fingers and toes? I mean, what the hell was the plan? I'd like a lot of kids. Well, that takes a lot of money. Let's go with the unemployed guy who sleeps till noon. I know. I know. Believe, I, I, I agree. Is, it doesn't like, make sense. I swear to God. It's okay. So just the other day, I was watching, actually a little while back ago, I was watching an old movie. I don't know if you watched it when you were a kid. It's pretty old school. It's called Old Yeller. I, I know of it, but I've never watched it because it would probably make me cry. <laughs> well, A, it will. Okay. Uh, and B, you'll get to know what the meaning of the word hydrophobe is. Okay. Which uh, I think Churchill said that Islam was to a man as hydrophobe, which is rabies, is to a dog. Ah. But this guy goes, it's like, you know, I don't know, 1860s in, in the West. And this guy goes off to do halala, whatever. <laughs> And the woman is like alone with two children in the middle of nowhere with bears and, and lions and tigers, oh my, mm -hmm. for months. And she's great. She's chopping wood. She's taking care of the kids. She's wrestling bacon or whatever the hell they do in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and uh, I mean, women, Western women used to be like these smart, sensible rocks. You know, like I grew up on a steady diet of Enid Blyton books. And uh, in Enid Blyton books, uh, she wrote like 400 books. She basically was a photocopier. And it's true, some of the plots <laughs> do blend a little. Uh, and I'm reading them again to my daughter. And it's like, wow, these are smart, sensible, solid, salt-of-the-earth women who generally make good decisions and are um, wise. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what happened. I don't know. Is it the pill plus leftism plus statism plus welfare? State? I don't know. But it's like women have gone mental. Yeah. And that I, I, I don't even know if they know it. I can't disagree with you. I really oh, good. Can't. Okay, I'm glad. I, I, I'm glad I, I'm not offending you because no, you're it's not. Just pretty I, true to me. No, I, I, I know. Uh, like a lot. Of, of course, I know a lot of women. I have a lot of women friends, and I, I know what some of the faults are that we have. I, I totally agree with you on a lot of, you know, what women do wrong kind of things. So, and, and I know I, I'm guilty as well. So. Well, guilty, I, I don't know about that yet because, I mean, a lot of information has been held. withheld. Right. It's like the entire West just took the accumulated wisdom of 2,000 years and set fire to it and said, yeah, let's just start from scratch blindfolded yeah. at high speed. Yeah. Uh, because, for, for instance, for instance, in the past, if a man has no education, no job, other children, and is not a good father to them and is currently in a relationship... Yeah, don't marry him. 
This was not right. brain surgery. This was, right. you can see these stories going back hundreds, if not thousands of years. This was not, that, that's, like in hindsight, you can see, that's not a really tough one. It wasn't like, wow, you know, he was a banker. He had an office, a Lamborghini, and a business card, and I phoned him at work. But it turned out it was an elaborate Truman Show style hoax, and the entire planet was made up in the mind of God. Like, I mean, <laughs> this was not a tough one to figure out whether no. he'd be a good dad or not, right? No. The only other redeeming quality he had was he was a good singer. <laughs> well, that's all right then. Can you sing? Um, I can do karaoke, but not that well. <laughs> okay, so even that didn't count. You know, no. if you ended up like Celine Dion, it'd be no. like, okay, well, he was a he was a dirt bag, but at least, <laughs> right? So, but no. that's not. No, that's what no. We're talking. Okay. no. All right. Okay, so um, this fifteen-year-old stalker, right. your limpet mine. What was his family like? Um, he had a. Uh... A mom and a dad um, and two sisters, but, um, and he was the only son, and he, um, I, I, he was a virgin as well, and just something, when, when I broke it off with him, he just completely went off the deep end and felt that he was never going to find somebody like me again, and why, I don't know, but... Okay, you've no, you've you've given me the head count of the family, but no sense of the <sighs> dynamics in it. Is it a little dysfunctional? I, I, it was a lot dysfunctional. Let's not. Uh, okay, the, yeah, they're from. Right, they're stalkers family. don't come from Ward Cleaver's house, okay? Right. Yeah, th they had a dysfunctional family, but in what way? I'm I can't really tell you. I don't know. So you lost your virginity to a guy, and you had no idea really what his family life was like. Uh, on only on a surface basis. Yeah, I mean, granted, they let... let you, don't, you don't know what the family life was like. You knew it was dysfunctional, no. but I mean, I'm asking right. you now, right, 24 years after the fact, yeah. 26 years after the fact, and you don't know what his family life was like. So that's highly risky behavior, right? Getting involved with someone without knowing their background. Correct, yeah. Okay, Yeah. And, and this is things that a dad would tell you. Right. I don't know why moms have stopped doing this, but dads sure as hell would. Like, if you were my daughter, I'd be like, okay, you want to date this guy? Okay. Let's have his family over for tea, and let's go over to their house for tea, and let's observe them in their natural environment and see how they're doing. <laughs> and after I would observe them in their natural environment, I would nail your bedroom door shut until you were 80. <laughs> yeah. With you in it, by the way, just as a detail. It can be confusing. Um, how were you so unattended that you managed to lose your virginity at 15? Well, Where was your mom? She was at work, and I would come. I was ah, a latchkey. So you were latchkey. a latchkey kid, Correct. unsupervised. Yes, yes. And, Excellent. Mm -hmm. And I would even sneak out of the house at two o'clock in the morning and go sit in the back porch and drink lots of alcohol with you know the neighbor kids. You know, I wasn't. I was definitely currently not recommended in Sweden. <laughs> anyway, go. On. Um, yeah, it was like um, I really started to rebel against her. Uh, against the value, values she tried to instill in me uh, as a child ev around 15. And, and it was like, I'm going my own way and you're not going to tell me what to do anymore. And she couldn't. Uh, she couldn't ground me. I wouldn't listen to her. She had no authority. You know, I mean, well, she, why did you uh, why did you have such contempt for her? <sighs> um, because I felt she she's a she's a worrier. She's a, a control freak. Um, and I have to admit, I, I have taken some of that from her, not as bad. Wait, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you just mm -hmm. as you're starting. Yes. She's a warrior? So she yes. was worried that bad things might happen to you? Yeah. You know, like, say, having a psycho stalker on your tail? I just don't... So did she know you had a boyfriend? She did, yeah. And did she do anything to vet this guy or his family? Um... I, I, I know that she had met his parents, and um, I was friends with his sister, one of his sisters. Um, uh, and, you know, he was always pleasant around her. I mean, you know, people can put on a good front. Um, it was only that... Not really. Well, I don't know. No, everyone says that, but that's just because you've been in, in rendered immune to the signs by having them everywhere when you're growing up. Yeah. I guess it's asking a little bit much... Asking the woman who married your dad to be a judge of character, right? 
Yeah, my mom really tries to give everyone a a, a chance. Like, you know, even if they just walked out of jail, she will be, you know, if she if they're nice to her, she's like, oh, come in for tea and cookies. You know, she's just like that. Kind so, of yeah, person. she has no, no boundaries, no sense of protection, and therefore migrant crisis. Okay. <laughs> so, so she... Basically, you had a boyfriend at the age of 15. You were unsupervised. She didn't know anything about his family. You still don't really know much about his family. So she wasn't really worrying that much, or she wasn't really worrying that effectively. Mm-hmm. Now, when you got the stalker, mm-hmm. what happened? You told your mom, I assume? Yes. And, and what, what did she do? She tried talking to his parents, but of course, you know, they, it was, you know, they wanted to take his side. Um, he even did... He, he even took it so far as to completely humiliate me in front of my mom by um, he uh, there was this, this little meeting arranged where his mom came over with him to our house and um, sat down with me and my mom and he prece- proceeded to sit there and cry and oh by the way you know we used one of your condoms in your drawer my mom meaning my mom's. You know, Wait, she, he said to your mom, "Yeah, we used a condom from your drawer yes. when I impreg. Well, when when I right had sex with your right fifteen year old daughter. Right, it was yeah. He and to humili- <sighs> to humiliate me. Yes, yeah, it was pretty rough. And and then what? Well." I mean, the, nothing really came of this whole, like, get-together meeting. What do you mean, nothing came? I, I, what does this mean, <laughs> nothing came? Things don't come. You make things happen. You know, a movie set didn't materialize around me, so I guess, you know, I don't know. You, you go for auditions, you make things happen, and it's your job as a parent to protect your kid. And right. if you've got some psycho stalker, you well, have to deal with it until it's dealt with, well, which means you escalate, which means you go to the cops, which no, means you get no. a restraining order, which means you move, which means whatever. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm You could have been that. dead. I know, I'm, but I'm getting to that. But, but she's yeah, your rock. I know, but... but ah! what, I'm, what, okay, I, what I meant to say was nothing came of that little family meeting as far as fixing the stalking problem. It was just like... Okay, how, did your mom do anything to fix the stalking problem? She did. She um, she did attempt to call the police, but back back then they like said you know there were no stalking laws back then. Uh, this was a, I don't remember the stalking laws then, but they I don't believe they existed. Um, and he was under eighteen, so they you know they didn't really care either. Okay, so let's uh, let's say that's all true, and Mike, I'm sure we'll have a quick look up to see whether or not. 26 years ago or 25 years ago, there was talking laws. and Okay. So then you move. Well, she had bought a house and she had put all... Oh, yes, the house. The house is very important because otherwise, where will your daughter's body be found? <laughs> well, you know, she lived on a secretary salary and she was raising me and, you know, she didn't... It wasn't something she could just up and abandon. You know, it was like, this is where she set up home and she did she she tried talking to the school she tried talking to the, his parents the police but only it only stopped until he when he turned 18 and and he walked by our house right after he turned 18 and my mom was outside and she said to him I heard you turned 18 um, you better not mess with my daughter anymore and after that it was over um, because obviously he was scared to go to jail so, right. Um, so you were reliant upon a woman for protection. Yeah. And that didn't happen until she threatened this guy with men coming to arrest him. Uh, right. And uh, that was how it was solved. Okay. Yeah. I'm, yeah. Right. Do you think she should have done more? Um, I am not sure what she what more she could have done. I wouldn't have asked her to move us. I, I don't think. Why? I don't Didn't this make your life a living hell for years? Weren't you always did. aware of it? Always frightened? Always worried about going to school? Always worried about every sound in the house at night? I mean, wasn't well, this always on your mind? It was. It, it was definitely traumatic. And it, it was a trigger for my anxiety and insomnia problems that I have, still have to this day. Um, uh, I, I, I don't... So you'd rather have 25, a quarter century of insomnia than have your mother move? 
I, uh, it's so hard for me to answer that question. Um, uh, I don't know. It, it was just like, wow, me and her finally have a nice big house. And to make to let somebody drive you away from it, I, I don't know. It feels like running away. Right. Yes, it, it does. And often, you know, if an elephant is charging at you, you <laughs> run away. Of course. I mean, yeah. if you can't protect your daughter and the, the, the police won't help and the laws won't help. I, I think maybe part of you it, run. maybe of course you do. part of it was we thought that we kept thinking this is going to stop. This is going to stop. Even like I, w- I would actually end up with I'd, I'd, I went into new relationships. I had new boyfriends um, and he would try to start fights with them. Um, but, uh, you know, he would still continue to harass me, and even they couldn't get him to stop my new boyfriends. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm kind of at a loss. Okay. Well, I, uh, I've sort of said my piece and I'm just saying this to the other parents out there. Listen, if your kids are being bullied, if your kids are being stalked, if there are death threats, uh, if if it's terrifying for them, if they're not sleeping, if they can't concentrate, if it is emotionally destroying any pleasure they have in their life, move, move, move. You know, everyone from North America, except the people who are here already, came from Europe. And the people who are here already came from Europe, but a bit further ago. Lots of people move. Nomads, gypsies, tigers, they roam, they move. It's fine. You can get up. You can pick up. You can move. Yeah. This cross your fingers and hope for the best. Well. Yeah, it didn't work. Does the opposite of working. Right. All right. So. 18 to 41. Give me the rundown. Um. Well, I, I still had um, some boyfriend, what I would consider normal, you know, adolescent relationships up until I was about uh, 21. Um, now, I, I should tell you that um, when I was 18, um, I got sick with mono, and this um, kind of changed my life because um, I never really fully recovered from it. Um, and that's uh, called the kissing disease, right? I, I yeah. had a friend who had that, and it's... It's brutal, right? Yeah, it was like six months of being unable to move, and it delayed me getting into college. And well, I mean, I eventually did, but um, it is an STD, right? I mean, you don't have to have sex to get it, but if you kiss a lot of people, the odds go up that you'll get it, right? Well, I, I mean, I hesitate to call it an STD, but yes, it is mainly transmitted through kissing. Um, and but if you're in a monogamous relationship with someone who doesn't have it, like if you right. get married or something, then you're not going to get it, right? Right, but also you could get it from a family member just by sharing a straw, technically. So, I'm not... Yeah, absolutely. And occasionally you can get AIDS from <laughs> blood transfusions. But what? odds are, right? Well, I don't... I, I, I'm not sure. I don't know that much about it. Um, but it it, it 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 kind of led to um, uh, chronic health How many, Sorry, how many boyfriends did you have? 15 to, 20, to 18? Oh, 15 to 18? Um, I would say maybe five. Um, and then what happened? And they, they themselves would have had, let's say, an equivalent number. Yeah. Right? So you're swapping spit with 25 people. Right. 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 And I, I do want to stress that I did not want to have five boyfriends in the span of these years. I wanted a loyal one boyfriend scenario. I wanted that. That is what I wanted at that age. But of course, Nobody warned me when I was when I was younger. Oh, as soon as you sleep with them, which you think is required, or they won't stay with you, as soon as you do that, then they're going to leave for somebody else. That was not taught to me. Uh, sorry, as soon as you sleep with them, mm-hmm. they're going to leave you. Yeah, because that's what they. So do. wait, I thought you said that you sleep with them, otherwise they'll leave you. But then you sleep with them, and then they leave you. So it, in in what scenario do they not leave you? No, in this? no. <laughs> okay, sorry, I should clarify. Sorry, I'm, I'm not. I'm not down on instinctual vagina management, so if you can, you know, get me up to the coven speed, that would be excellent. I'm, I'm not, I'm not much of a um, clit wrangler, uh, so I just, I need to know what the rules are these days. Plus, I'm ancient, you know, for a lot of my audience, so I don't oh, know why. Yeah. Back, back then, I thought it was my own understanding that if I 
did not if if I did not end up sleeping with my boyfriend, then he was going to dump me. So I felt obligated at some point. But and is that because you knew that there were other girls who were having sex with guys? And so it's sort of a race to the Yeah. I was gonna say race to the bottom, but basically it's race to the ass, right? Pretty much. You you gotta put out, otherwise he's gonna go find someone who will. Exactly. But Okay, so so in, in that you're saying you know, come for me, stay for the vagina, right? <laughs> I guess I thought that they would stay for the rest of me, you know, um, which was stupid. Um, oh, so the vagina is the bait. You're the hook. I just thought I was, I thought I had more to offer than that and that they would see that and, and but, but it was wrong. you still had to offer that. So you thought, right. and again, I, I have sympathy for this. I, I really, this is, a, women are in a terrible situation. Mm-hmm. Uh, at the moment, young women are like, I'm nothing but sympathy for this. So I'm not trying to be critical here. I mean, it is a really God awful situation when teenage sexuality runs away and everyone becomes R selected and there aren't dads around and no one's protecting you one and everyone's boy crazy and girl crazy and hormones are running R selected, like R selected geysers reaching to the moon. It's a mess. Yeah. And so I really understand that used to be, of course, a kind of pact among women, which was none of us put out. Exactly. None of us put out and whoever puts out we're going to shame them into their component atoms. Yep. Because if this wall breaks, if this wall, if this hymen breaks, we're doomed. Because we'll never know ever whether the guy likes us mm -hmm. or just wants to do stuff which allows him to not think about sex for about eight and a half minutes, right? I agree with you totally. Yeah. 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 No, this, uh, this is a terrible, a terrible situation. And uh, it's particularly destructive for girls. Because, um, and we were just talking to a lady who was um, pointing out that the amount of, I think it's um, uh, the amount of happy joy juice hormones that is released by a woman's body during intercourse is so significant that it's, uh, it's bonding. Mm -hmm. Like a, a woman bonds. And of course, it's a, it's a very vulnerable position. I mean, you're down. There's a guy usually a, a size and a half to twice your size. You know, on top of you, you're in an exquisitely vulnerable position. And a woman is designed to really bond with a sexual partner, men, particularly our selected men, less so. And so the woman is in a tortured position. I don't mean to be telling you mansplaining, but I just want to get this across to the audience. It's a, it's a terrible position to be in because if you don't sleep with the guy, you're afraid he's going to go somewhere else. If you do sleep with him, you're afraid that uh, he won't care about you or respect you. Um, and so you're desperately trying to hang on to this slippery penis fish trying to keep its attention, uh, and it's, you know, the, you know that old song, you know, um, will you still love me tomorrow? You know, that used to be the big yeah. question, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, you know, the, or like there's this old Goldie Horn movie, Private Benjamin, was, uh, you know, he said he loved me, he said he loved me, he said he would never leave me. And then what happened? And then he came. <laughs> yeah. And it's, uh, it's gruesome. Yeah. And it makes a very complicated... Uh, slippery, manipulative, confusing, and fundamentally dishonest interaction. Because you can't be openly vulnerable and say, I really am afraid that if I don't sleep with you, you're going to go somewhere else. Like, you, you have right. to be scheming mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. You know, you're like this this plotting. You know, my, my daughter and I, we have plotting hands. You know, when we're plotting something, we, we rub our hands together and stroke our invisible mustache as well. Mine, not so much. But mm -hmm. it's, it's god-awful. Mm -hmm. It's a god-awful situation. And that's exactly why... The Gandalf Hyman used to stand on the bridge, thou shalt not pass. You know, that was the big thing, you know, no passing and no sex without commitment because the woman's going to commit hormonally anyway. Mm -hmm. No sex without commitment. But that coven has been completely broken. And now it's just like, uh, you know, watching a bunch of fat kids dive into the uh, contents of an overturned smarty truck, right? It's awful. Yeah, completely. Okay, so... That's enough of my general explanation, but your particular experience was that, is that anywhere close to what happened? Um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, th th that's pretty, I mean, not all of the boyfriends I had dumped me, but the when, <clears throat> when they did after, you know, having sex with them, it, I took it extremely hard and I, because uh, I didn't really have my mom to talk to about this and she hadn't warned me in advance so I wasn't mentally prepared and I'm young and you know I took it really hard and I internalized it as the fact that I must be fundamentally flawed and this is where my low self-esteem really took hold 
um, despite being. You no, know, I I would say that this behavior was the result of the low self esteem, and this probably exacerbated it. But your mother knew at the age of fifteen that you were having sex because the little creep talked about using the condom, right? Yeah, yeah. And so after she knew that you were having sex, what did she do? How did she talk to you about it? How did she step you through the minefield? And it is a minefield. There's no goddamn teenager alive who should ever negotiate sexual politics without guidance. Right? You, you can't, it's like saying, okay, uh, I need you to pick me up in 20 minutes. Go build a car using only wire fencing and pine cones. I mean, you can't, right. she- you can't possibly figure all this stuff out. The only thing she tried to guide me on uh, was like basically don't get a don't get a disease and don't get pregnant. It was never anything about well there are emotional ramifications of what you know this in, in entails as well. Did she have boyfriends herself? She dated, yeah. She had some boyfriends during during uh, my years. She never remarried though. Um, and the guys were around. Um, they were occasionally, uh, she, she pretty much kept them away from me though. Um, they weren't, cause I don't even, I don't even remember them that well. Uh, so she, she was, but she, they didn't stick around. No, no. I mean, she would, you know, she would stay with them for a while, but for one reason or another it didn't work out. So, you so know. you didn't have any instruction on how to get and keep a quality man. No. None. Right. So how would you? I mean, it's like if I, if you've never even heard Japanese, how the hell are you supposed to speak Japanese? Right. Right. All right. So we left you um, staggering along under six months of mono, which you said has never completely gone away. Well, yeah, it, I'm still suffering from chronic fatigue issues and fibromyalgia uh, and um, which is just some generalized muscle pain and and depression and anxiety. So, yeah, um, but just feeling the way I feel, you know, make anybody depressed, but <laughs> I digress. And is this, um, did this start with the mono and has continued since, or did it let up for a while and come back or accelerate no, later? No, it, it started with the mono, um, and just, it was like a slow downhill thing as I aged. It just got kind of worse and worse. So, um, yeah, it, that, that's not been good, but... Right. So how did your 20s go? So um, my 20s did not... You said a bad girl. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and, I, and I even hate to admit it, but I can't fix something I don't admit. <laughs> um, back where I lived, uh, I lived in a, you know, major city and, you know, cold north. And, you know, there wasn't much to do except go out and drink. Um, and so... You know, me and my girlfriends, that would be a two to three times a week activity is going to the clubs, getting dressed up, looking beautiful, you know, trying to, you know, attract the quote hot guys. Um, And see, my mindset had kind of shifted around the last serious relationship I remember that ended when I was around 21. Um, After that, I just kind of felt this fed up angry at men feeling that I am not going to play your stupid game anymore. I'm not- you mean the game of um, trying to lasso him yeah. with the labia and seeing if he breaks free? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I got very angry inside. And, and so, I'm so sorry to, to, to interrupt, yeah. and I'm sorry for asking such a shallow question. Okay. But I'm a guy. Um, <laughs> no, but, but it has something to do with it. So uh, when you were younger, and I'm sure this is similar now, I'm only 41, but when you were younger, uh, wh- how do you think people would have rated you uh, physical attractiveness, 1 to 10? Uh, probably an 8. I mean, I'm not saying this from my perspective. No, no, it's fine. No, but, I, I, look, everyone, everyone says that and then immediately puts caveats in. I, I, this is something everybody needs to know. If I had to de- you need to I know mean, this for yourself. If I had to describe myself, I, I try to portray myself as kind of a girl next door image. Um, like, I, I feel like I'm understated. Um, yeah, you're the Marianne, not the ginger, right? Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not flashy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so. Uh, right. I, um, okay, so you, you were, uh, a, a ver- that's very good looking. Right. And, yeah. and you had youth uh, and fertility and all this kind of stuff. Mono. OK. Right. But uh, you had all of that. Now, is the mono, it, it stops being infectious after a while, obviously. Right. Um, 
yeah, it's the infectious stage goes away and it just lays dormant. And in theory, you can anybody can catch it from you. But statistically speaking, 90 percent or plus of the population already has antibodies to it. So it's not really something I did. You have to tell guys you had mono before you kissed them. No, no, that's really not um, the general consensus. People don't don't do that. Yeah, you're not in a sort of Robin Williams situation when he had. Okay. No, no. Uh, no. So is it is it fair to say that in your, after your after 21 you didn't really have serious relationships? Were they mostly just? They were just one night stands. Pretty much. Yep. I throughout my entire 20s it was basically just, you know, hookups. And I'm not saying it was necessarily a different guy every week, um, but. And it, it, I didn't always go home with somebody. That wasn't necessarily my goal. I was I, I actually enjoyed dancing. I've always been like somebody who loves dancing, so that was my outlet. But hey, if I saw a you know guy that caught my eye and vice versa, yeah, I you know probably might hook up with him. Um, and and would this be? I'm sorry to be, be probing, so to speak, but yeah. is this sort of like like no last names, no exchange of phone numbers, one night, get out, like a couple of hours, get out kind of thing? Um, no, not quite that bad. A lot of them were like FWBs, friends with benefits, you know, so, you know. Um, oh, like we've seen each other at the bar before, and if we don't find anyone else, we might go home <laughs> with each other? Yeah, stuff like that. But but I, I kind of want to stress that I, when I look back on this and reflect on this behavior, I don't feel that I was doing this for sexual reasons. I feel like it was a major power play and it was a way that I felt better about myself and felt in control of the situation. What what situation? Uh, The male-female dynamic. It was just like... Oh, because the men wanted you and the men would approach you and the men would buy you drinks and you felt powerful. Well, yeah, that... I'm sorry, I'm not trying to tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, that didn't sound like a question. I apologize for that. I'm certainly not trying to tell you your experience. Uh, is that close or is there something else? Well, it was just sort of like, uh, it was sort of like, okay, well, I'm not going... It was like I went into it with this attitude, well, I'm not going to get emotionally attached to you. You can't hurt me. We're just going to have fun. And I'm going to feel, you know desired. It's going to boost my self-esteem. It's going to make me feel better about myself. It was almost like a drug in that regard, but then you would crash and then you would feel crappy. I mean, about did it, uh, did it make you feel better about yourself? Temporarily. A- outside of the moment. Outside. I mean, of cocaine makes you feel confident, but it's right. not the same as self-knowledge, right? Yeah. Outside of the moment. No, I was, and I was at the time I was self-medicating with alcohol. I mean, I was in a club and, and, Definitely self-medicating. Um, I'm pr- actually pretty introverted, so I kind of needed that to. Oh yeah, no. Al- cl- clubs are one big flashing epileptic-inducing sea <laughs> of a lot of people with social anxiety chasing away their demons with drugs yeah. and alcohol. That was me, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So, were you ever in any dangerous situations through this process? Um, I got lucky. Uh, I never got hurt or raped or anything bad but i tell you what that was only out of luck and just i could because have very you easily had friends who weren't so lucky no I, I don't know anyone personally that didn't that something bad happened to it's just i know what can happen i am you know and and looking back it was it's very like, it's like these guys don't even know it's a rape culture <laughs> huh, it's that interesting it, it was just very i know what i did was very dangerous well, yeah, I mean, not not if you're dating whites and Asians, I guess. But, well, uh, all right. I was only dating whites. I know. That's right. All, yeah. Right. Yeah. You, you, you wouldn't want to try that in Somalia uh, no. necessarily. But anyway, no. um, so you um, went through your 20s and I guess you had a series of uh, you, your friends, like your girlfriends that you say you, you dressed up, you know, man's shirts, short skirts kind of thing. Yep. And um, you, you would go out to the bar. Uh, sometimes you'd go home with a guy. Sometimes you wouldn't. It would kind of last or not. Friends with benefits here and there. Mm-hmm. Now, is it true or is it the case that your female friends were doing this and none of them sort of peeled off and settled down? Um, some of them did peel off and settle down. But the main, my best friend at the time, 
that I had known since um, junior high. Um, she was just like me, and we kind of probably fed off each other's, you know, dysfunction. And um, yeah, neither of you wanted to get fixed because the other person would feel bad, right? <laughs> something like that. But yeah, we yeah, like if one of you got a steady boyfriend who was a quality guy, then yeah. But you were looking for looks, right? Is that like the hot guys? You said right? Yeah, and I hate that I even say that, but because I don't. Why? Um, because it makes me sound very shallow and maybe I am. It makes you sound like a guy. I mean, you were living like a guy. Yeah. Well, you're living like a gay guy, right? <laughs> I mean, you were living like a guy, right? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I was so focused on looks. Maybe it was just like, I don't know. Because you were living like a guy. Okay. <laughs> Guys are focused on looks, right? right? Yeah, I guess. And, and if you are selected, you're not going for personal quality. Mm -hmm. You're going for size, strength, chiseled jaw, full head of hair, high cheekbones, piercing blue eye, whatever it is that's mm -hmm. going to be your particular triggers. Mm -hmm. Because you would have been are selected, uh, you would have been going for a science of physical right. uh, quality rather than emotional or, or maturity qualities. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this went on for, I guess, 21 until when? Um, until um, 30, uh, when I, I moved to Florida with my mom. Um, I had the uh, the weather up there had just gotten to... Wait, hang on, hang on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Why am I pausing you here? I don't know. What did your mom do? Oh, no, my mom didn't do anything. Um, no, no. What do you mean? What did your mom do? You said she moved. No, no, it was my idea. I, I wanted... No, I don't care whose idea it was. <laughs> okay. Your mother... <clears throat> yeah. ...moved. She wanted to... Well... Why is that important? Um, because I didn't want to be without her and vice versa. No. I don't, I don't know. Your mother moved... But she said she she was well, she was tied into this house and her job and when uh, I you know uh, her, well she couldn't move for the stalker and ah no well I'm sorry I missed a part in the story where she eventually sold that house after and I can't I, I was in my twenties when she sold it I have not lived with my mom this entire timeline I've been right. living the house that that you had hang on you had to have years of livid terror as a teenager because the house was so important and then she just sold it in your twenties anyway. <laughs> Yeah, well, it would it had been she'd finally, you know, paid it off and she was going to make no, no, money. No, you're not you're not getting the I point. I know, I know. I'm not you're you're studiously avoiding the point <laughs> in by giving me a bunch of verbal I, junk, right? Yeah. So, she moved. She sold the house and she moved. Right. She was she was living elsewhere. Right. Yeah. So the house and didn't And how happen. old were you when she did that? Um from when she moved out of the house, I was in my it was between 25 and 30. Um, and then, okay, so uh, eight eight to ten years after the stalking stuff was going down, correct? She just moved anyway, right? It, it, yeah, right. yeah. Okay, I'm just I'm just pointing this out. We don't have to pause well, on it, but I just want you to bookmark that and perhaps revisit it. The, na a bit. the neighborhood was going downhill. Um, well, your neighborhood was going <laughs> down quite a bit with the goddamn stalker. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. So it really wasn't the neighborhood was crap for you. You were pretty much in prison. Yeah, yeah. All right. Anyway, that's so, just something to bookmark and, you know, maybe okay. check back with your rock a little bit. But, uh, okay. So you hit 30. Yeah. Uh, which is also known as the wall. I'm sure you've heard of that. Reproductiveness. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the 30 is when women sort of go, wait a minute. Hang on. What's that? <laughs> Uh-oh. Dust. Dust on the eggs. Dust on the eggs. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not going to be young forever. I'm not stuck in a timeless capsule of being 20. <laughs> oh, no. I'm getting wrinkles. Is that a gray hair? Oh, no. I have middle-aged spread. I've turned into a muffin. Right? Well. You know what happens? I mean, you, you, you take off your bar, bra yeah. and the boobs flop down like the ears of a cocker spaniel. <laughs> well, it, it ha I've been a little bit luckier in that regard. <laughs> so, but, but Well, lucky or unlucky, because if you look on the outside... It don't matter the, the eggs, right? The eggs age doesn't matter how good. Like you, I right. can change the eggs that are two days past due. I can put them in a new carton. I can get Botox for the outside of the eggs. It don't matter to whether you can eat them or not, right? Right. Well, one interesting thing that that made me re reminded me of is my mom had me when she was thirty, so she she had me right at that you know that wall. Um, All right. So you <laughs> you hit the wall, and the wall doesn't mean life's over. It just means like okay, now it might be a good time to panic. 
Well, but to be honest with you, I never wanted children. Um, and uh, and I'm probably going to get flack from your listeners for this, but it was just from 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 a young age, I never felt like I wanted children. And I think a lot of it had to do with, number one, it was just me and my mom. It was a quiet household, not a lot of yell, not a lot of you know voices, chaos around. So I liked peace and calmness. Um, and, um, I, from an early age, I was extremely fascinated with animals. I felt maternal towards animals. And I know I've seen your, um, listeners bitch about that. Why do women love animals and not people or children? I, no, I can't. It's, it's because you get to, you get easy ways to bleed off your maternal drives. Yeah. Uh, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is, it, it does. And I, I love animals too, don't get me wrong. I mean, mm-hmm. I love animals as well. But for women, you know, the old cliche of the childless woman with cats, you know, I mean, they yeah. they go crazy because, you know, we're kind of designed to have children. And if you don't have children, I mean, not everyone has to have children. It's right. not some sort of divine commandment. But we're all here because somebody chose to have children. Right. And um, uh, pets is, uh, yeah, it's just that's a way not, to, I know, uh, that's not a good enough reason. It was just a personal choice. And to be frank with you, I don't think it would have been a good idea for me to have children because I, I have severe allergies. I wouldn't want to pass these on to anybody. Um, what? I wouldn't. Oh, no, come on. Come on. <laughs> Do you like being alive? <sighs> I don't want to die. Uh, but I, I mean, you're, you're talking to me rather than taking an invisible pirate walk off a building <laughs> right so if you can live yeah. with your allergies yeah. yeah someone else and you, you don't no no you don't know you um, that may not be heritable I mean. well i did inherit my allergies from my father's side and there was also a tendency towards depression and anxiety on his side of the yeah. family well maybe maybe if your mom had helped you you could have chosen a guy quite the opposite of your dad yeah and then you wouldn't have to worry quite as much about that right uh, but then again, if I had had a kid, I could have screwed up the same way she screwed up. Or, you know, I just, yeah. Maybe it's just the best I ended the cycle here, you know. I don't, I don't. Well, you didn't, you didn't end the cycle. You broke the bike. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, ending the cycle is, is taking something that's spinning around like tide, cutting it loose and taking it away. I mean, you just yeah. nuked the whole arena here. There's no ending the cycle here. There's just right. ending life it's ending the bloodline right right and th- this is very common yeah. t- to be honest right i mean it's like lots of kids fewer kids one kid no kid mm-hmm. very few of the people i knew who grew up as single kids are family oriented so that is a trait of only children in my i haven't studied it but in my okay. experience okay it's like this depressing subtraction you know <laughs> five kids, four kids three kids two kids one kids and we're done yeah yeah. But um, also, you would have had to, um, you'd have had to stop catching the D, right? You'd have had to give up on sleeping around. Right. Right? And, and mm-hmm. clearly, you liked that. And so, you used your sexual organs for fun rather than life. Yeah. Yeah. It was... It was like, a, it was a way to, it, it helped my self-esteem just like alcohol did temporarily. Right. Okay, so 30. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also people who are abused as children very often have a very soft spot for animals because they want to provide the kind of protection and nurturing that they did not receive as kids. But it's a topic for another time. So, mm-hmm. so then 30, what goes down? Hopefully well, not you quite as much, but uh, what, what <laughs> Um, well, uh, I, I, my depression had been become really bad and, and a lot of it was weather related up there. So I, I, and I'd always dreamed of living weather, sorry, yeah, weather Weather related weather, because where I lived, it was like, you know, it was like Seattle weather. It's like, it's always raining. Oh, cold. I, I'm no expert, but the fact that in your life it was raining alcohol and balls <laughs> might have had something to do with that. That's the weather that I would look no, to first rather than just it's raining. I, I know you're going to, you, you won't, you'll think I'm making this up, but it really truly was the weather. 
Oh, seasonal affective disorder, right? Yeah. SAD, some people call it. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah, uh, take was... my snarky comments and, and flush them. But uh, <laughs> okay, so you got to the sunny climate, you got to the sunny state. Yes. Uh, you ate some oranges, you got some vitamin D, yeah. uh, a little bit different from the uh, vitamin D you were getting <laughs> before. And um, and then what happened? Um, I I just didn't have it in me to continue that that path. Um, in fact, I was kind of winding down in my late tw- 20s. It was like, I-, I can't do this, you know, anymore. It was. Uh, and why not? Um, because I just got the, the empty feeling just got worse and worse and worse. And the depression got worse. And it was like, what am I doing? You know, and yeah, drinking and sleeping around. Yeah. Didn't turn out to be the magic soul healing panacea that you were hoping for, right? Correct. So, um, and what about your friends? Were they in the same boat, or were they still happily on the uh, carousel? Except for that one close girlfriend, most of them had dropped out of that scene. And so it was getting a little lonely too, right? True, true, yeah. And there were lots of younger models in the showroom, so to speak. I guess. I mean, yeah. I mean, there always are. You know, couldn't couldn't quite pull the hotties as much anymore, <laughs> right? No, uh, seriously. I mean, probably. this is a fair fair comment, isn't it? I mean. I do look a lot younger than my age, but yeah, of course I'm, you know, I'm going to be, my model is going to decline after, yeah. you know, a few years. A, but. This is the sound you don't want to hear when the woman opens her legs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, can go on. Oh God, I'm painting myself in such a beautiful light, but yeah. Um, Actually, you're doing fine. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm doing that. So I apologize for that, but okay. Um, so you, you get to Florida, you feel better with the sunshine and yes. then what happens? Um, I, I do uh, I attempt a date again, um, and this time I'm trying to, you know, look for somebody that is. I, I'm not looking for like, you know, someone to have a kid with, just a monogamous relationship. And I, I did have um, about, uh, th- I'd say three in the past ten years. But, but you have no, you have no skills in no. the maintenance of a relationship. No. Um, right. I mean, you might as well just signed up to repair nuclear power plants, right? I mean, because yeah. you, you've basically just been sleeping around right. and you have no skills on how to have a committed relationship of negotiation and compromise and bills and health and whatever, right? Exactly. You know, I complete, I'm completely, yeah, I, I don't know what the and, hell. And, and what kind of guys were you getting? And this has nothing to do with your level of attractiveness, just in terms of like, you know, the first people to the auction get the best goods and what's left in your 30s. Um, well, I did lower my, my, my standards, you know, I mean, I, I wasn't trying to, plus by this time I realized that the hottest looking guys are usually not going to be the ones to settle down. I had enough common sense. You think? (laughs) Yeah. Well, especially, especially because, so the good looking guys you can't settle down with because of you in your twenties, right? (laughs) Seriously. Like you in your twenties is now the enemy of you in your (laughs) thirties. I never thought about it. You get that? that? Yeah, yeah. Because they can just go to the bar and dance with some woman and then go and have sex with her and wander off. So the alphas is because you, because of you, like when you were in your (laughs) 20s, you were screwing things up for the women in their 30s. And now when you're in your 30s, it's the women in 20s screwing things up for you. Oh my gosh. I never thought of it like that. Yeah. It's true. Because women don't know the degree to which they're taking some of the alphas out of circulation by offering up the V, uh, you know, uh, if they drop a pencil on the ground. Right. All right. So I did. I did try to have, uh, and I did have a couple relationships that lasted a couple years, but they were very dysfunctional. And a couple of years. Yeah, believe it or not, there were two. No, I, I believe it. I'm oh. just. What, did, 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 did a couple of years surprised me a little bit, and then when oh. you said that were dysfunctional, that surprised me even more. How were they dysfunctional? Um, I think that. Well, I mean, my fear of abandonment has followed me, and I was uh, always just. I, I was always in a state of stress and trying to analyze what my partner would, what his, what his actions or words meant. Um, like, like I was always trying to read into it more. Like, uh, did he say that because he's not happy with me in some way? Am I doing something wrong? Is he going to leave me? Um, I was extremely. Oh, um, man, you I, were high maintenance. Probably and exhausting, right? Well, I exhausted myself. Um, no, no, I forget yeah, about you because yeah. we're talking about the guys here yeah. for a moment. If we yeah. could just, you know, yeah, go sure. over the fence. Sure. 
um, that that's exhausting. Yeah. Right. That in, in, like insecurity that is kind of a dictatorship for other people. Like I feel anxious. You have to fix it. I feel anxious. You have to fix it. The other person can't fix it because they didn't make right. it. Right. Right. And so that just gets exhausting. Right. Um, yeah. 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 I'm and so- is that what happened? Like everyone just got kind of tired out and didn't have the strength to pick up the phone anymore? Or like how did, <laughs> how did these things peter um, out? Well, uh, one of them, um, it, it just kind of, we grew apart. Uh, and I think it, I, he was extremely sexually obsessed with me. And he, it was like, I started to feel like that's the only reason he wanted to see me. He didn't, he lived about 45 minutes away. And I just felt like that was the only reason he came over to see me. And I, and I think... Was re- to have sex. Yeah. And I think the... Re- so you're exactly back to where you were as a teenager. Yeah. Except, well, I, I have a monog- monogamous guy, but... but No, but as a teenager, you're like, okay, I, I, I got to have sex with him. Otherwise, he won't be interested in me. But now I'm afraid he's only interested in me because of the sex. Yes. And I started to feel a lot of resentment over it. And, sure. And... Uh, yeah. If, if you have sex early... You don't have sex later. That's the deal. <laughs> if you hold off on sex, you get lots of sex later. If you have sex early, you don't have sex later. Yeah. Because the insecurity is founded in, right? Yep. I can never be friends with someone I had to pay $50,000 to be my friend. Right? Because mm-hmm. no matter what happens, the beginning was always had the $50,000 I had to pay to be my friend. Yeah. Uh, vagina is bribery. Right? Uh-huh. And you can't ever feel secure with someone you had to bribe to be around you. Correct. All right. But you know all this. Yeah. And how many, yeah. um, <clears throat> so how many men did you sleep with from 15 to now? From 15 till now? Mm-hmm. Um, I have to be honest, but I never put, like, I don't have an exact count, but it is somewhere around 60. I know. That sounds terrible. That but sounds I, low. I, but I, it, I'm being, no, because you I'm said being that you, you wouldn't go home with someone every week. Well, no. It, but if you went, let's say you went home with someone every second week, that's of, 25 guys over 10 years. That's 250 guys. No, it definitely was not that many. Um, a lot. Every third week. A, a lot of them were repeats. Like remember the friends with benefits things. And, um, oh, right, right. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay. So. Um, yeah. I, I. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot about that. I, see, see how old I am. <laughs> I am See try- how monogamous I am? I'm completely <laughs> but I am trying to be completely honest. I, and no, I It's embarrassing that. to even say that because I... And did your boyfriends know that you'd slept with 50 or 60 guys before being with them? Um, like in your 30s? I'm sure we had those conversations eventually. I don't think I ever admitted the true number to them. I, I don't think I could. I, would, I was too afraid that, oh, well... You know, she's a she's a slut. You know, you don't. What do you think that you were? I think I acted promiscuous. I, I think that I, but I, of course I was I was picky. Um, but uh, well, I, I hate to not, use the not word. Not that picky. Sixty is not that picky. I hate. I, I just hate to use the word slut. I I don't. I I don't because. Okay, what number for you would be a slut? Probably. Oh God. Sixty-one. No, I probably. I, just, oh, I don't know. I don't know if I can put a number on it. Um, uh, and I, I'm I'm curious because I think that we can all accept that there is such a thing as a slut, and that's not particular to men or women. Although, again, I think it's more damaging for women. But um, I'm just curious what the number would be. I I guess. Maybe over a hundred in a lifetime. I don't know. Maybe I'm being, maybe I'm not being hard enough on myself. I just, I feel like I've admitted what I've done wrong and I've paid my dues and I don't want to, I don't want to damage my, my psyche anymore and labeling, labeling myself that. Oh, and I'm not saying you should. I was just okay. curious. I'm not, I, I don't know what the answer is. Okay. Um, so, you had a couple of boyfriends in your 30s, and right. did they each last a couple of years, or was it, um, and w- were they older or about the same age? Uh, five years older, both. Um, the two longer-term ones were five years older than me. 
Um, there was one shorter, shorter one that was younger than me, but, um, and these were guys who themselves didn't want to have kids, right? Correct. Right. Okay. So they would be willing to date you because they're older, whereas the younger guys probably are looking for guys, uh, for, for women their own age or younger, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And when did you last have uh, a relationship? Um, about five years ago. I've, and I've, since then, you haven't uh, tried, is that right? No, I've given up on relationships. I am, I don't have any interest anymore. I've gotten to this comfortable level of being alone. I feel like, you know, if I, it, even if I put myself out there, um, I don't have enough to give. Um, and I don't, I, I don't want to feel that scary feeling of, well, you know, the games you have to play and well, you don't have to play, but the games well, you choose to play. Well, I, I think it would be games in my own mind. You know, it's like, okay, the guy texts me and when should I text back or should I call him or, you know, I just want to be myself and I feel like I can't be myself, you know, I, right. the technology has changed things. So what do you mean? Well, with, you know, it's with, there wasn't texting, you know, really back when I was, you know, in my twenties, there wasn't Facebook. It, it like adds a whole nother level of paranoia to the whole thing of, what do you mean? And again, I'm, I'm asking because I've never dated in the digital age, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, there was email when I was around, but, um, I guess, but it was delivered by carrier pigeons, but sorry, go ahead. Um, I think, there's more opportunities for men to cheat. It's easier. They can hide it easier. Um, so, my, the, you know, I'd be more insecure in that regard. Um, and and texting is, I, I hate texting personally. I like to talk on the phone, but a lot of guys even my age are not into that. They'd rather just text everything. Um, and, and to be perfectly honest with you, I... And I don't know how much of this, uh, of this is physical, how much is emotional. I, I just really have lost interest in men. Uh, have you lost interest in sex or men as a whole? Both. Both. Well, and do you think that's partly due to the sort of physical tiredness that you feel and so on? I'm sure that is a major part of it. Um, and it could be hormonal. You know, of course, your hum hormones are going to dip as you get older. Um, but... Even, even if it wasn't for that, I just feel like I don't have the that that mental toughness to to try to to be in a relationship now. I feel like I've just been broken too many times. Been broken. And I'm I'm obviously really really sorry to hear that phrase, but been broken. Well, been broken. I mean, I, I I've done it to myself. I, I mean. A lot of it I've done it done to myself, and I admit it. I just did anyone during the course of your life. Did anyone say to you, "This isn't going to go well for you"? Yeah. Like this, these choices that you, yeah. And this is this is the frustrating thing that I that, that I have around this stuff that that you're kind of flying blind in a lot of ways, right? Yeah. I mean, every movie that I watch, the men and women meet and go to bed. Mm -hmm. Right. I watched some, <clears throat> I, I, I do this just for sort of cultural research, but I watched some movie with, I think Kate Winslet and, um, Oh God, and these people, Jude Law and, you know, and, and yeah, they, 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 they meet and they have sex. It's the same thing in Woody Allen films. Well, meet, have sex, meet, have sex, meet, yeah. have sex. It's just, there's no courtship. There's no getting to know each other. There's no other family members, you know, that you're ever going to have to deal with. No mother-in-laws, no cultural differences, no nothing, right? Right, right. And um, so there's, generally there's this programming for meat sex, meat sex, meat sex, meat sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. M-E-A-T sex, M-E-A-T sex. And there's not, um, not a lot of restraint in any of that. And who's saying to people... You're smashing yourself up. 
on the rocks of Cox, right? I mean, you're just like a ship. Right. You got away with words. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, nobody ever and told me to... No, nobody says it, right? Mm-mm. Nobody says it. No. And, and any time you try to say it, any time you try to say... I mean, I, I mentioned this the other day in a show, Rupert Everett, this actor, this gay actor, he said, uh, I had too much sex when I was uh, younger. I just slept around. And he was, he's a fantastically good-looking guy. Uh, he's in, uh, I think, An Ideal Husband by Oscar Wilde. It's a good film to see him in. Who is he? What's his name? Uh, Rupert Everett. Okay. Um, if you ever saw The Runaway Bride with Julia Roberts, yeah. he played the friend. Okay, I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And he said, uh, I had too much sex when I was younger with too many faceless people, and it just smashed me up. So this isn't a, 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 a phenomenon just for that happens to women? Oh, no. I, I had, um, I mean, I knew gay people when I was younger who had sex, introduced themselves, and then went on a date later. Oh, okay. And, um, yeah, antidepressants, uh, the, the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, this idea that it's like the obesity of the genitals, you know, like salty, fatty, sweet food tastes good, but it's terrible for you. In moderation, great. Right. You know, if you want to have a lifetime of eating bad food, really moderate how much bad food you eat so you can enjoy it longer. Right. And but- I'm not trying to trying to say that sex is bad food. I mean, yeah. it's, not, it's not a guilty pleasure. Sex is a wonderful part of life and why we're all here. And mm-hmm. it's the only thing that makes up for being taxed as an adult. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I get income tax and sex. <laughs> okay, I'll still fight the income tax, but I'll take the sex. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, you want to aim for the long haul yeah. when it comes to your sex life, right? I mean, you had a lot of variety. I assume that some of the sexual encounters when you were in your 20s were enjoyable i mean in the time at the time i assume you weren't just gritting your teeth lying back and right, thinking of no. gloria steinem's slowly spreading smile at the destruction of western civilization or anything i mean you were having fun and you were right. out there and you got the dopamine hit of some guy finds me hot and wants to take me home and you right. know chew off my bra i mean so you got all of that and that but you know now you're 41 mm-hmm. you're probably halfway through your life or maybe yeah. a little less than halfway you got another 40 years to go right and what are you going to do? Well, I'm probably going to just just sit it out now. I mean, sadly, uh, you know, I I I'm not one of those people that's big on therapy, uh, and I just no, I I get that. <laughs> I mean, you tried a kind of therapy, right? Which I guess involved couches from time to time, <laughs> right? But you you tried a kind, you tried ball therapy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it didn't work, as a therapist would probably have told you. Right. So it is what it is, and I take responsibility. At least I try to. And uh, And what would you say to to young women? What would you say to the 18-year-old women who see this fork in the road, and on the one side, it's like, oh, I'm supposed to be Barbara Bingsley and wear my... Greet my husband in, in full formal wear and makeup when he comes home from work and I'm supposed to just fry up his little steak and bring him the scotch while he sits on the couch and the, the, the dog sleeps under his slippers and right. I mean, so there's this this cliche say, Oh, you know, it's all like uh, uh leave it to beaver, uh, the you know, Ozzy and Harriet, and it's supposed to be cynical, but Ozzy and Harriet look pretty damn fine to me, as did Leave It to Beaver. Pretty damn fine. Right. Pretty, pretty great life. And on the other hand, they're told, you know, hypersex potty train. Well, you'll never be thrown off. It'll always get round and round. You'll have fun from here to eternity. Don't worry about your eggs. Kids are for squares, you know, like go right. out and have fun, you know, work those cocks like you're at <sighs> Vegas. Ka-ching, 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 right? And th- until you get the l- five lemons called your last five decades. Yeah. But what would you say to women who are looking down your road, looking down other roads. What would you like them to hear? I would say to anyone that's listening to this, uh, take my life as a cautionary tale that this is not where you want to end up when you're 41. Um, I, I still have life left to live, but, you know, because of my choices, it, it's, uh, you know, really damaged me emotionally and 
and uh, it may, it's probably not fixable at this point. Um, and you know, don't don't um, don't sleep around. If 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 you want to settle down with somebody, you need to teach people how you want to be treated, and and if they walk away, they walk away. But the short-term fun party sleeping around lifestyle is not what it's cracked up to be. Yeah. Yeah, you you burn your future yes. with the bright fire of your 20s, right? Yes. And when it's all done, you can't remember much of the fun, but you're looking forward to a lot of the loneliness, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I and I accept, I accept that, but I don't I don't I see how, you know, society is, and I feel, I know how the young women are, are, out, are doing out there, and they're, a lot of them are doing the same thing, and it, it makes me think we're just going to end up with a bunch of more people like me in another 20 years, and it, it really does bother me, you know? No, we'll just end up with Sharia law, but that's a different story Yeah. if this stuff continues, right? Yeah. So... And also, you know, it's, it's a tough plea to make, but I want to hold men responsible as well to all the alphas out there having sex with all of these women. I mean, you're destroying your civilization. You're literally destroying your civilization. Look, if, if a good guy, if a, if a quality guy, and it's a good-looking guy, a stable guy, had wanted to settle down with you at the age of 23, you'd have been open to that, right? Yes. But no... They got to boomerang their penises back to the bar. Hey, maybe this vagina will feel slightly different. Maybe this one will have bumper cars. Maybe this one will have a Calliope. Maybe this one will have elves. Maybe this one will have a scepter at the top that I can use to rule the world. And it's like, you know, they're, they're really not that different. You know, it's apples in a bowl. Hey, maybe this apple will taste like non-apple. Nope. It's, uh, it's, it's vagina. It, it's not, you know, it doesn't come with a spiral staircase next time. It's <laughs> vagina. You know, I mean, uh, this nose is very, this nose is a banana. This nose is a kumquat. Anyway, you, so, so the guys out there who are like, hey, I can go out and I'm so good looking and I'm V-shaped and I'm meaty and I'm, I got some moves. <laughs> I don't know if dance, I used to love dancing. I still do, but I used to go to discos all the time, all night. Great <laughs> stuff. Anyway, but the guys who are out there just pulling the girls, you are breaking them. You are cracking them open and breaking them. You know how like prisoners get big hammers and they're supposed to break rocks in jail. Well, you got a hammer called a penis and you're breaking women. And you are creating a massive amount of resentment among the betas who might have a chance if you'd zip it up and keep it home once in a fucking while. Right? I mean, if the alphas had dried up, you'd have looked for other alternatives. Right. I hope that those alternatives would have been better, but there was a steady conveyor belt of penises you could go to, right? Mm -hmm. Eeny, meeny, miny, more, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And seriously, I mean... Maybe there's more variety among penises than vaginas. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know because, you know, the only, the only forest of penises I've ever been exposed to is in the locker room. And I can't tell because, of course, nobody's erect and I ain't looking. Right. But uh, tell me, was there enough variety that it made it worthwhile? No. I mean, that's a non-issue. It, it had nothing to do with guys' penises. Yeah, the, the vagina... Swells or shrinks to accommodate. So, and the other thing too is that generally, the longer you play tennis with someone, the more fun the game is because you get to know each other's things, right? right. And so, the longer you're in a stable sexual relationship, the better the sex come, becomes because you kind of know what what to do, right? Right. Here's where I open the banana without using hands, right? Whatever it's going to be. <laughs> yeah. And. So that, that's a, a missing too. But so for, for guys, you know, you got to grit your teeth and you got to stay home. Or you got to find a girl and stick to her. Because when you go out and just start 
pulling all this V, you're taking it out of circulation for others and you're breaking it badly to the point where it can't settle down, right? You, 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 having, you don't have kids. Right. You're not likely to have kids. Which means that civilization, I mean, this is part of the, um, the demographic winter, right? Yeah. A lot of it has to do with alpha males out there breaking women with their cocks. And that means that the women are less likely to settle down, less likely to have kids, less likely to be able to sustain a relationship. Which means that there just aren't enough taxpayers around. Which means that, hey, import third world migrants. No problem. They'll fit in just fine. Right. So, you know, I, I crab a lot of women and I feel a huge amount of sympathy for you in this life, in this situation. Um, you say you're not a big fan of therapy? Not really, no. I, and I yeah, I would argue that you should be. Okay. And it would be a great investment. I don't think that there's any reason you should cross your legs and say, I will never be touched in romantic affection ever again for the next 50 years. In a half century of no one to cuddle, hey, mom's going to die. You know that, right? Oh, I know, yeah. And I'm telling you, I have seen the people who are facing the past. I have seen the people who are walking into the future facing the wrong way. And their parents die. And they are left in their 50s with 30 or 40 years to go and no one around. That's going to be me. Okay. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be. Right. Doesn't have to be. But to do that, you're going to have to peel yourself off your final drug, which is your mom. And that doesn't mean don't have a relationship with her. I'm not saying anything like that. Yeah. But you need to have a realistic assessment of her pluses and minuses. Okay. And right now, I would assume because of early attachment issues, you are unable to criticize of you, your mother, objectively, which means you have to live in a land of self-denial and delusion, which causes you to falsify your existence. So why do you manipulate men? Because you manipulate yourself with regards to your mother. Why can you not tell the truth to men? Because you can't tell the truth to yourself about your mother, her pluses and her minuses. Because when you listen back to this, and I hope that you will, you will see every single time I brought up something that might be even mildly critical of your mother, boom, you're like a ninja. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you're manipulating yourself with regards to your mother. Your mother is not in, uninvolved in the disasters of your life, my friend. I'm not saying she's 150% responsible, but she's not uninvolved. She made choices, and she kind of set you adrift in a sea of semen without telling you that goes over a waterfall onto rocks. And there are things to criticize. And as someone who takes criticism and values it, she'll survive, and you'll survive. And if you have a direct and honest relationship with your mother— you won't feel as much of an impulse to falsify your existence to others and you will be able to sustain a relationship. You can't sustain a relationship if it's based on manipulation and falsehood because it's tiring. Yes. It's tiring. It's exhausting. Mm -hmm. And when you get exhausted and you feel unconnected, you have compulsive sex to overcome the exhaustion and pretend you have intimacy. And that wears away at any foundation of the relationship until everybody just gives up. You know, if somebody tells you to play tennis with an anvil, you might hold it around for a while, but eventually you're just going to wander off. Too tiring. Right. We can never be more honest with someone than we are with ourselves. We can never be more honest with someone than we are with regards to our parents. And if you cannot look at clearly at the pluses and minuses of your mother and your father, but mostly your mother because she chose your father, but your father is important in this as well. Mm -hmm. But if you can't have a clear-eyed view of her, and if you're censored with regards to her, listen, she had 41 years to intervene, my friend. She at least had 30 years since you hit puberty to intervene, to, to do something, to say something, to help you avoid making the mistakes that she's made. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, 
her lack of doing that has caused you to make even more mistakes than she made because at least she had you, but you have no one when she's gone. Right. So she gets companionship to the grave. Who's going to be there for you when you get that phone call from the doctor that says, my dear, this shadow on the x-ray is what will kill you. And it's going to take you six, it's going to take six months or it's going to take a year. But this mammogram came back. You're positive. It's untreatable. This is what's going to kill you. And you've got six months or you've got a year or you've got two years or you've got five years. I don't know. Your mother has someone who's going to be with her. Yep. But unless you change, you won't. And that is a shitty way to leave the stage. But if you go to therapy and you get a good therapist and you do the work, it doesn't have to be that way. Okay. I really appreciate your insight. You sound like I just cratered you like Bambi meets Godzilla here. <laughs> it's, well, I mean, um, you know, when you brought up, you know, losing, losing my mom, it's actually been, even though she's healthy right now, it's something that's been on my mind that she, I feel like my world will fall apart when she's gone and that shouldn't be, it shouldn't be that way. I mean, yeah, people grieve, but I shouldn't feel like my entire world just dies with her. So... The man I know whose mother died, he said his heart, he could feel his heart turning to stone on her deathbed. Yeah. So, yeah, I would uh, have, I mean, I'd get some therapy and I'd, you know, it's not like you're spending money on kids, right? So I'd get some therapy and I'd talk to my mom and these are things I would do. I mean, okay. I hope that you'll mull it over and uh, I really, really appreciate the call and I really appreciate you putting yourself forward as an example that takes a lot of, uh, of courage, and I appreciate that. Thank you, Stefan. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Take care.